Chapter 1001 Waterfall on God Mountain Hansen chased the ape king, but again, he was unable to keep up. He could have sworn the simian fiend was cheating, and before long, it had completely disappeared from sight. But with the king gone, the other monkeys still tried to attack Han Senator after sealing their seventh sense, he went into hiding. When their sight returned to them, they poked around and looked for Hansen, but they couldn't find him. Not too concerned with establishing a manhunt, they just went away. I'm going to find you now. Believing they were headed home, Hansen decided to follow the monkeys. After 10 miles of travel, he saw a grand mountain many of the monkeys were scaling. Hansen admired the grandeur of the mountain and was in awe at the spectacle. Its peak was nestled above the clouds, and there was a massive waterfall. It was incredibly beautiful. If I had to wager a guess, I'd say the Monkey King makes its home here, Hansen said to himself, and then thought, now I know where you live. If you ever show your face, and if you ever disturb my people again, I will be back. I'll kill your kids and all your grandkids. We'll see who's laughing then. Hansen approached the mountain, and as his sense of scale improved, he got a sense of how truly enormous the mountain really was. He could not even see the peak. The silver waterfall came from someplace above the clouds, and it looked like a silver dragon descending from the heavens. Strange. I wonder where the water comes from? Hansen looked around, and noticed it really was just a single mountain surrounded by the woodlands of Thorn Forest. It was not a mountain range. A lonely mountain, with a spectacular waterfall such as that, was strange in Hansen's eyes. Does the water come from the sky? Hansen thought, but then quickly disregarded the idea as ludicrous. Hansen turned his attention back to the monkeys that scaled the mountain. Curiously, they were all headed for that waterfall, and when they reached it, they went beyond it. Hansen's interest was captured by the sight, and he wanted to see exactly what they were doing and how they were disappearing into the waterfall. After another moment of contemplation, Hansen decided to check out the waterfall himself. So, he started to scale the mountain, heading there alongside the blue monkeys that still couldn't notice him. The monkeys were unable to beat him in a fight, and even if Hansen had to take on the ape king, he was confident he could beat it. Therefore, he did not need to fear going after them. Hansen wished to see what they were doing behind the waterfall. Upon reaching it, Hansen found that there was a cave behind the waterfall. He scanned the entrance and could not see a thing. All traces of the monkeys had vanished. Bauer herself looked curious, and she asked, Daddy, where are the monkeys? I'm sure we'll see them soon enough. Hansen walked inside the cave with caution, slightly worried that he was walking into a trap. But nothing happened. He walked through the caves for three kilometers, and still, he could not find the monkeys. The cave was getting dark, too. Hansen could no longer see Bauer's face, either. He had his doshed in aura active, and try as he might to find a creature, there was nothing. There was only the black. Hansen kept a hand on the cave wall as he went, and he thought to himself, what are the monkeys doing down here? Is there a treasure of some value, maybe? With the thought of treasure running through his mind, Hansen's excitement for this affair was renewed. Wherever he was headed, there was only one way. The cave's tunnels were linear, and there were no forks or branching pathways. As such, he did not have to worry about getting lost. He walked another ten miles in that place, and he started to wonder whether or not he was going to reach the end. Regardless of where he was, the mountain was far too big for its own good, he thought. He suddenly saw a light ahead of him, which brought him a joy that had long since been vanquished. Holding Bauer tight, he ran towards the light. It was an exit, and speeding up, Hansen ran out. Before him lay a valley. There were countless monkeys playing in that valley, and across the verdant greens of that expanse were gorgeous trees. Are they geno plants, I wonder? Hansen looked at the trees, and after a brief scan, Hansen could detect the life force of each. They were indeed all geno plants. Many of the trees were ripe, and there was much fruit growing across their boughs. The monkeys were gorging themselves on the succulent fruits, even now as he looked on. Awesome. So many plants with really high life forces, I most certainly hit the jackpot today. Hansen wanted to rush forward and claim them for himself, and even Bauer was squirming with hands outstretched, obviously wanting to eat the fruit. Don't be hasty. We're still not sure if we can even eat them yet. Hansen held Bauer tight, watching the reactions of the monkeys as they ate the fruit. The geno plants did look strange, admittedly. As such, he was a little hesitant to begin eating the fruit their branches offered. The geno plants possessed fruit, but that was it. There were no flowers or anything of the sort, 
which was why Hansen thought it strange. Hansen, with his eyes alone, could see at least a hundred of the Geno plants. But none of these plants grew weapons, beast souls, or creatures. Not even spirits. There was only fruit. The monkeys weren't selective of which fruit they wanted, either. They just picked up the fruit nearest to them and kept on eating. Bauer could not wait any longer, and she escaped Hansen's grasp. She crawled to the nearest tree and climbed it. She picked up one of the fruits and ate it. Chapter 1002 Mystic Valley Bawa sat upon a branch of the tree with a fruit in her hands. Then, she took a big bite. A lot of juice flowed out of the fruit, and it emitted a pleasant fragrance. Bawa ate the fruit whole in a few more bites. Then she licked her lips and immediately went for another. She climbed further up the tree and collected as many as she could carry. She stuffed her face with the fruit all the while saying, Daddy, come and eat the fruit. Dismally, Hansen thought to himself, if only I could be so carefree. Unfortunately for me, I have monkeys to deal with first. Hansen was not currently in the mood to eat, and there were at least a thousand monkeys with their eyes fixed upon Bauer as she munched their food. The monkey king made an appearance, and after it noticed her, and it yelled at her in its simian tongue. All the monkeys began hopping and jumping about in excitement. The monkey king was glowing blue and it jumped towards Bauer. Hansen immediately grabbed Bauer away from the tree and activated his Dong Shin Aura. But this time, the Monkey King seemed immune to the seventh sense stifling effects. It came directly towards Hansen, without pause or confusion. Needing an extra kick, Hansen activated Jade Sun Force and long lived to speed up and evade the incoming attack. The Monkey King was incredibly powerful, and if Hansen didn't use his Super King Spirit Mode, he wasn't sure if he'd emerge victorious. Hansen was far slower than the ape, as had already been established. But he was fortunate to have the Geno trees all around. They were basically sacred to the monkeys, and the last thing the Monkey King wanted to do was destroy those trees in a rampage. Acknowledging this, Hansen was able to use the trees for protection. Bawa swallowed the last morsel of fruit she had collected, and she looked bloated. She reclined in Hansen's arms, satisfied without concern for the horde of furious monkeys. Ducking and weaving, Hansen was getting chased all over the place by the Monkey King. They ran across the valley for a long time, but then, Hansen stumbled across a wine jug that had been crafted from jade. Half of the pot was in the soil, and only its rim and lid were exposed above the earth. The reason it stood out to Hansen, and why the wine jug was most curious, was the fact that it was ten meters tall. He could not fathom what sort of being would use it to pour wine for themselves. Do humans or spirits reside here? I wonder. If he had to take a guess, Hansen thought it would most likely belong to a spirit. He didn't think humans could make use of a 10 meter tall wine jug. Before he could admire it more, though, the Monkey King was closing in. In the nick of time, Hansen evaded the attack. But when he did so, he took notice of a giant stone bowl in the ground. This shocked Hansen, as well. They were curious items, and yet, they were all half sunk into the ground. There was a 40 meter tall cauldron in the area, too. It was all rusted, but there were several dings in the area, also. It was strange. Everything in the area was significantly larger than they should have been, and even the smallest cup was a few meters tall. Hansen wondered how long they had been here, but signs pointed to it being a long time. All the wares there were caked in dust. The items had also been crafted either out of jade or copper. And whereas the jade items were doing perfectly fine with the advance of time, the copper wasn't faring so well. The copper wares had rusted and were clearly in a state of decay. Hansen ran the length of the valley from end to end. He could not detect the presence of a single human or spirit there. But now, he had been trapped. He had backed himself into a corner, which proved to be a dead end, and he had no way out. The Monkey King was still in pursuit, and it was drawing near. It came for Hansen with blistering speed, gleaming with a blue light all the while. Hansen jumped into the air, wishing to fly up and above the rabbit ape. But the Monkey King jumped and tried to attack Hans Senator. Fortunately for Hansen, he was adept with airborne maneuvers, and he was able to sidestep in the air to evade the monkey's fist. As he did so, he called out to the monkey, Haha, Chunky Kong, I can fly. I bet you can't do that. The Monkey King did not look angry, though. It looked happy, and a grin formed on its face. It seemed as if it was the monkey was now laughing at Hans Sr. There was clearly something amiss, and Hansen felt it. 
but even with his dog Shin aura active, he could not sense what had brought on the aura of unease. Having almost exited the valley in flight, Hansen felt as if he hit a wall. Brought to a sudden stop, he fell back down with Bauer. He reactivated his flight and dodged the Monkey King, who had come over for a follow-up attack. Hansen maintained his position, but could not see what had brought his earlier flight to a sudden stop. Looking up, there was no wall or fogged object that he might have accidentally bumped into. Hansen flew up to where he hit something solid, but this time, he went slowly. He felt as if he was coming into contact with an invisible wall, and when he reached out to touch it, it bounced him away. What sort of power has created this invisible, Skyborne hurdle? Hansen tried exiting the valley from another portion of the sky, but he was met with the same results there. All the while, the Monkey King continued attacking while Hansen dodged. It had been going on for some time now, though, and he knew he could not keep it up much longer. Hansen decided to fall back to the tunnel he had entered the valley from, but strangely, it had disappeared. He punched where he believed the cave had once been, and the power of his strike was deflected back into him. There was a lot of power in that fist, and Hansen ended up making himself bleed. Holy SH asterisk T. Where the H asterisk LL have I ended up? What is this place? Chapter 1003 the fruit. The blue monkey king came swiftly from behind, and Hansen decided he'd had enough of this ordeal. He stopped dodging and simply activated his super king spirit mode. Boom. Hansen punched the monkey king with tremendous force, which knocked it backwards into a roll. Unexpectedly, it landed perfectly. The strike had hit the monkey's fist, and the only damage the strike did was to cause the creature's hand to bruise and swell. This was an unpleasant surprise. His Super King Spirit Mode had opened its first gene lock, but his fitness level was much higher than a sacred blood creature's. For the Monkey King to be nearly unfazed by Han Sen's strike, he couldn't imagine how many gene locks of its own it had opened. Han Sen's Super King Spirit Mode was always on a short fuse. If he stood a chance, he couldn't waste a single second. He had to take his opponent out before the timer expired. But weirdly, the Monkey King was starting to run off again and Hansen was unable to catch up. How many gene locks has this guy opened? Hansen deactivated his Super King Spirit Mode. Hansen knew he wouldn't be able to catch up with the ape, so he thought it best if he saved some strength. The Monkey King looked scared of Hansen, surprisingly. It stopped, then simply watched him from afar. The Monkey King commanded the other monkeys to follow it, which made them back away from Hans Senator. The worst they did was give a mean stare to the intruders of the valley, as they heeded their king's order. It was fortunate for Hansen that the Monkey King was somewhat of a wimp. Being unable to beat the Monkey King with his 10 seconds of Super King Spirit Mode would have left Hansen in a dire predicament. With the valley now mostly clear of monkeys, Hansen decided to explore the area a bit. The only things of note there, aside from the trees, were the oversized dishes and cooking implements. None of them were particularly special or fancy in appearance, and they looked fairly practical and crude. Whatever they were, they were made by hand, that was for sure. Hansen didn't want to spare too much time thinking about those items right now, though. After the fight, he noticed he was feeling rather hungry. He ate some of the red fruits Bauer had consumed to fill his empty tummy. They tasted sweet and refreshing. It's no wonder she loves these things. They taste much better than the seedless fruit you can buy back in the Alliance. Hansen ate a whole fruit. Super King Self Spirit Gene Plus One Hansen was shocked, learning that a single one of those fruits could provide one self geno point. Yiksha had only managed to grow one Devil King tree, the fruit of which also provided one self geno point. Is it possible that all these trees can be as bountiful as the Devil King tree's fruit? Hansen, not sparing any time, raced to grab another fruit. Super King Self Spirit Gene Plus One After Hansen ate the next, he heard the same announcement. He had rarely been this happy. What about this fruit here? Can they provide the same? Hansen picked up a yellow fruit, which he had seen a few monkeys consume earlier. When Hansen ate this fruit, he heard the announcement play again. He was giddy like a schoolgirl. If I ate them all, how many self geno points might I receive in total? I'd wager a fraction of this valley would be enough to cap off my self geno point needs. Hansen, reveling in excitement, began munching all the fruit he could. Unfortunately for him, he was not a super creature and his belly had a limit. After ten of the fruit, he was stuffed and could eat no more. What disappointed Hansen the most, though, 
was that after eating three of the red fruits, his points did not increase anymore. It seemed as if by consuming the same fruit three times, and by receiving a self geno point each time, he couldn't get any more. Still, there's a wide variety of fruit here in the valley. Even if I took three from each, I could still earn myself a few hundred geno points. Hansen was not at all disappointed, as there was still plenty to get. After Hansen was full, he decided to look around for a way in which he might exit the area. The sides of the valley were tall and steep, and the sky was blocked by an invisible force. He had been trapped. The Monkey King and the monkeys were still in the region, but they did not dare provoke him. In fact, it seemed as if the monkeys themselves were looking for an exit, as well. After the monkeys had eaten the fruit, their bodies seemed to morph and become stronger. Even the mangy, lanky monkeys were starting to buff up and look similar to the king. Hansen's face became dire when he noticed this. What's more, it seemed the monkey king had only just found this place instead of living there, as Hansen had initially suspected. If they did not know how to leave, then he was stuck there with them. And by further observation of their behavior, his suspicions were confirmed. The monkeys had gotten bigger. They weren't king-sized yet, but it was clear they had opened a few gene locks. Hansen made sure to eat as much fruit as he could, whenever space was reclaimed inside his stomach. Before long, he had reached the third tier of Super King Spirit Mode. His power had not greatly increased, but there was an improvement to the length of the talent. Hansen summoned his disloyal knight, Meowth, and Golden Growler, and got them to dine on what they could. Following their consumption of the fruit, they each experienced some changes. After this, though, Hansen was determined to find a way out. There had to be a way to escape the valley, he just had to find it. But the mystic force that shielded the place proved to be too formidable, and it protected the land there. Hansen could not even create a cleft in a rock with a mighty strike. Hansen realized time itself was rather stiff in the valley, too. It felt as if time was standing still there. The trees had stopped growing. The ripe fruit did not fall to the ground, and the unripened fruit stayed as they were. This valley is a strange place. Hansen was a little bewildered by the place he had found himself. But it seemed that, until the cave revealed itself again, he wasn't going anywhere. He also realized he couldn't get in touch with Moment Queen. It was as if such connections were interrupted by the powers of the valley, isolating him. Chapter 1004 Three Years Stuck there in the valley, with no immediate concerns, Hansen was bored and had nothing to do. Aside from chatting with Thorn Baron and taking care of Bauer, he spent all his time practicing the Blood Pulse Sutra. Perhaps it was because he had a lot of fruit, the speed in which he could practice had vastly increased, and he unlocked the next gene lock in a few short days. His Blood Pulse Sutra was developing very quickly, but the same could not be said for the Dongshan Sutra. Hansen put a stop to his practice of the Dongshan Sutra to wholly focus on the Blood Pulse Sutra for the time being. And that was all he could do. As boring as it may have been, at least it was beneficial for his personal growth. When he was a little worn out, though, he'd take the time to investigate the valley and examine the earthenware a little more closely, and perhaps even see if he could unearth a clue or come up with a solution to his dilemma. But the items that were strewn across the valley lacked markings or telltale signs of their former owners or makers. Without any leads to follow, Hansen seemed to forever remain at square one. There was, however, one item he came across that was interesting. It was a broken tablet that had been entirely buried beneath the ground. He caught sight of a monkey taking a leak nearby. It dug a hole and did its business, and when it was done, Hansen noticed the corner of the fragmented tablet the monkey had inadvertently dug around to answer the call of nature. Unfazed by the monkey pee, Hansen went over to uncover the rest and dig it all up. The tablet was big, just like everything else in the valley. It was 10 meters wide and 2 meters tall. The text on the tablet was written in an ancient human language, one that Hansen had little knowledge of. The only word he could decipher was the word knock. It was fortunate Hansen had once taken the time to educate himself about ancient languages. If he hadn't, he would have passed the text off as nonsensical scribbles. Hmm, this is an ancient human language. Was this thing created by humans? Hansen was shocked at the discovery he had made. On the word knock, Hansen noticed there was a bloodstain. It was a melancholy sight to see. He then looked at the craftsmanship of the tablet. He couldn't guess what tools had been used to carve it and etch the ancient characters, but the work was remarkable. It was all very smooth. It was strong, too, 
and even if Hansen exhausted all his power on the tablet, it was likely he couldn't break it. He'd probably not even be able to leave a mark. Aside from this curiosity he had found, no other item he had seen in the valley had words etched upon them. Hansen and the monkeys were still stuck there, and with no daytimes or nighttimes, it was impossible to determine how much time had passed. Hansen continued his practice, and things came along very well. With his 1500 fitness level, he managed to open six of his blood pulse sutra gene locks. He also made sure to eat a lot of fruit, too. When his self geno point tally reached a sum of 900, it appeared to become significantly more difficult to increase. No matter what fruit he ate, he could not increase his self geno points. As far as he could tell, he had maxed it out. Even Thorn Baron helped herself to the fruit of that valley, and her development came along quite a bit. She managed to open nine gene locks. The blue monkeys had done well for themselves, also. They all looked like fierce primate warriors. They were terrifying. But because they had all been in the valley together for the same amount of time, trapped, they had become friendly. All of them were in the same boat, and both parties acknowledged there was no need to make matters worse by maintaining their hostilities. With no day and night cycle to mark the passage of time, Hansen had made sure not to lose track of the calendar, though. He counted the hours that passed in his head, and every time the count hit 24, he made a mark. It might not have been the most accurate calendar, but it had to be fairly close. They were there for a long time, so long. Hansen believed they had all been stuck in that valley for three years. His blood pulse sutra was up to its ninth tier. There had been no advancement with his super king spirit mode. It was still at 900, and Hansen was still unable to earn any more points for it. Unfortunately, his fitness was still stuck at 1500. His sacred blood and super geno points had not increased one tiny bit. Still, the fact he had managed to open so many gene locks with such a low fitness level was a remarkable accomplishment and one that was extremely rare. But even at seven gene locks open, Hansen's body could not support the surge in strength it provided. Super King Spirit Mode did not have this negative effect, though. So, Hansen was able to use that as freely as he could. With all of its gene locks open, Hansen could use Super King Spirit Mode for at least a whole hour. If he did use it that long, though, Hansen required a whole week of rest to recover before he could use it again. After three years, Bauer was still the baby she had always been. But Hansen understood her life cycle might have been different than a typical human's. On this day, as he frequently did, Hansen took a stroll all around the valley. He did this every day, trying to spot even the slightest difference in the place, which seemed to be stuck in time. And over the course of the three years, there had not been a single change. That is, except for the fruit they had all eaten. The trees were bare, and the valley looked glum and dead, following their three-year occupation of the place. If they didn't find a way to leave the valley soon, there was a possibility of a simian uprising, and Hansen and the apes would end up fighting again. But on this day, when Hansen approached where the entrance of the valley had once been, he had his breath taken away. Hansen almost cried tears of joy. The flat wall, which had blocked his return once before, now led into a tunnel. It was the exact same one he had traversed to get to the valley three years ago. After three long years, we are free. Bauer, come. We can leave this place. Hansen ran to Bauer and picked her up as hastily as he could. He was afraid the cave would disappear. He returned Thorn Baron to the Sea of Soul and called over to the monkeys, saying, Come on, let's go. We can leave. Hansen did not know whether they understood or not, and neither did he care to stay and find out. He raced back to the tunnel as fast as he could. As he ran through the dark tunnel, the roar of a waterfall began to echo around him. When the literal light at the end of the tunnel greeted Hansen's eyes, and the sound of that waterfall caressed his ears, Hansen felt like crying. Over the past three years, he had become far stronger and had advanced a considerable amount. But still, it felt as if he had spent the time in jail. He had been stripped of all freedom. Now, he had been given that freedom back, and that sensation trumpeted through every cell of his being. Hansen ran out through the waterfall and flew into the sky with Bauer in his hands. He went up and up, shooting through the clouds. Hansen is back. Ha ha. Chapter 1005 Fleeing Team on the slopes of that mountain, a group of people were traveling. They were a mixture of young and old people, and there were about 200 people in total. They were sluggish and in disarray, and upon closer inspection, many were wounded. 
Some had been more grievously injured than others, with many having lost entire limbs. It was a horrifying scene. Uncle San, are we going to make it? A young woman asked an elderly person as she rode upon a unicorn. Yes, we are, the old man answered her with absolute certainty. They were surpassers, hailing from Wind God's shelter. They were once incredibly strong, and one of them had even opened eight gene locks. They had conquered royal shelters for years. But this legacy was brought to its knees upon the arrival of a powerful spirit. Thousands of people had died in the sudden siege, and only two hundred had made it out alive. The man who had opened eight gene locks, and many other brave warriors, remained behind to stall the spirit that attacked them. They gave their lives so others could escape. But fleeing to the wilds was not a guarantee of safety for anyone. It was often a crueler fate, and this mountain was not someplace anyone could take refuge. This was a place not even an army of spirits would dare go, and so the small group's chances of survival were nearly nil. But these people did not know this. Still, they remained wary, just as much as they were weary. It was a foreign land, and they had to maintain vigilance. Even if they crossed the mountain successfully, there was no guarantee fonder pastures awaited them on the other side. The area past the mountain was most likely controlled by spirits, as well. With nowhere specific to run, and with no idea what fate might soon await them, all they could do was give in to the whims of their feet. They traveled with no destination in mind, in a simple escape of the horrors behind them, in a desperate hope that no more would lie ahead. Lin Weiwei did not ask again. As kind as her uncle's few words were, she had just been hesitant to accept the truth of what was most likely to happen. She wanted at least one comforting thought, but their reserves were empty, and there was no comfort to be had. Whether any of them would survive was now in the fickle hands of destiny. After another two days of harsh passage, they encountered more than a fair share of creatures. Two more people fell in battle with them, and they were still in what could be regarded as the foothills of the mountain. As they went deeper, they knew crueler monstrosities would soon appear. Careful, we have movement to the left, someone said, which drew their attention there. Prepare for battle. Uncle San rallied, whose actual name was Linhi. After his command, Silence gripped the air again. Then came the sounds of rustling. It drew nearer and nearer. Sweat and fear choked the hearts of those who waited for whatever foul beast would emerge and waylay them. A shadow started to form in the foliage, and with their weapons in hand, they prepared to fight. But when the shadow came closer, the dark figure began to take shape. It was a person, strangely. It was a twenty-year-old man with skin that was smoother than any fair maiden. If it wasn't for the person's manly face and strong, wide body, he could have very well been mistaken for a woman. When they saw another human approach, relief captured their hearts. Someone yelled, What is wrong with you? You should stick with the team. He's not one of us. And how can a baby exist here, in the third god's sanctuary? When Lenny said this, the warmth of relief evaporated in a sudden tuck. Their nervousness was amplified once more. The people realized that they did not recognize this man and a baby was asleep sucking her finger. The sight unnerved them. Humans could not enter a sanctuary before they were sixteen years old. Only death would await them, if they tried. If this was true, how could one survive there? Kill him. He is not human, and this is a trick. When a person commanded this, bows were raised and aimed at the shadowy figure. Don't shoot. The man with a baby in one arm raised his other with the plea. Renounce that forked tongue and spare us any lies you wish to conjure. Attack this wicked fiend. With these words, arrows were knocked and strings were drawn. The refugees were on edge, and they had every right to be. With this person appearing from out of nowhere, in possession of a strange baby, they struggled to believe it to be an actual human. Stop, he is one of us. Lin Weiwei leapt off her unicorn and stopped the barrage of arrows that was about to be loosed. One of us? You don't even know him, someone asked. I know him. And if you can't recognize his appearance, then his name is one you must certainly be familiar with, Lin Weiwei said. Are you certain? You know who this man is? Lin Yi asked, as no one dared to lower their bows. This is President Ji's son-in-law, Hansen, Lin Weiwei said. Lin Weiwei was Lin Feng's auntie. They had once met a long time ago, in a conference held by the four families of Lin, Shui, Ji, and Wang. He is Hansen? Lin Yi asked, in disbelief. Ask him, if you do not believe me, Lin Weiwei said snidely. Before Lin he could ask, Hansen broke the silence. 
He asked, Sister Wei, how is Lin Fong? A vat of relief washed over Lin He. It was immediately comforting for him to learn this person knew Lin Wei Wei and Lin Fong, who was still in the second god's sanctuary. Not bad. But now is not the time for idle chit-chat. Do you care to tell me why you are out here, on Ghost Mountain? And where in the sanctuaries did this baby come from? Lin Wei Wei asked. Everyone was still in a state of alarm, so Hansen stepped forward to be friendlier and ease some of the tension out of the atmosphere. A creature chased me here whilst I was out hunting. Oh, and it's not an actual baby. It's a humanoid pet. I'm still growing it. Hansen smiled. Hansen wished to say something more, but a sudden scream erupted from the front of the team. It was a wretched plea for aid, and when they turned to look, they saw a surpasser burning to cinders. Chapter 1006 Three days, three years. A monster appeared on the slopes ahead, wreathed in fire. A man, who was looking Hans Sin's way, was suddenly set ablaze. Hansen frowned at the sight, but thought it fortunate he had stumbled across the group right before a crisis befell them. Now, he had an opportunity to prove his worth and removed any shadows of doubt they harbored that he might not have been who he said he was. But before Hansen could move, Lin Weiwei tugged at him and said, Please be careful. I can help, Hansen replied. Protecting yourself is the best thing you can do for now, Lin Weiwei said, before she started running towards the monster. Hansen wished to tell her, I can kill that thing. Get your hands off me. But before he could, she and the others in their company had gone forward to run the creature through. Lin He was a fairly accomplished fighter, and he had opened seven gene locks with a skill that aligned to the wind element. Nobody looked happy as they felled that beast. They were upset at the realization they had so suddenly lost a teammate and friend, one who had already endured so much. Hansen spoke with them for a bit, and when they believed him, they accepted him into their fold. Sister Wei Wei, what is the date? I was chased for a few days, so I fear I have lost track of the date and time, Hansen asked. When Hansen exited the cave that led to the valley he had been trapped in, he emerged in a land he had never seen before. As strange as it was, the monkeys did not follow, either. After taking off and flight above the clouds, when he descended, the mountain was gone. Try as he might, he could not find the same mountain. And during his search, he had stumbled upon Lin Weiwei and her people. She told him that her shelter had just been destroyed by a fierce spirit, and they were in search of a new place to stay. Hansen asked them if they had heard about Thorn Forest before, but they looked at him blankly. No one knew of such a location. Today is the seventh, Lin Weiwei said. It was common for people not to know the date. Which year? Hansen asked. It is the year 25, the month of March. Lin Weiwei found it strange he had asked that. Are you sure it is the 25th? Hansen asked with wild eyes. Although there had been no shift in daylight during his stay in the valley, the constant presence of the sun and blue skies might just have been an illusion. And even if he had miscalculated the time that had elapsed, he wouldn't be as clumsy as to mistake three days for three years. But Lin Weiwei told him it was the 25th year, and he had chased the Monkey King on the 4th of March. There was no possible way he had only been absent for three days. I am not old enough to misremember the year, Lin Weiwei said. Hansen was flabbergasted and not sure what to say. For him to only have been missing three days was quite the shock. That valley must have had some control over the flow of time. Time was still there, and the monkey was able to speed up time. There must be some connection there, Hansen wondered to himself. The mystery of what occurred on that mountain puzzled Hansen a great deal. It was a conundrum he was keen to mull over, and so he wondered who or what was responsible for the shift in time there. Hansen had never heard of a power that could have such a radical effect on the flow of time. Lenny asked Hansen a few questions. He told them he had come from Thorn Forest, which disappointed everyone. We have to keep moving. We need to cross this ghost mountain and find someplace new to settle down, Lin Weiwei said. Spirits were strong, but so were super creatures. Past the mountain, the lands were divided like kingdoms, domains ruled either by spirits or super creatures. If they ever reached a place with no spirits, they could possibly take a spirit shelter for themselves. Hansen followed them. He had opened nine gene locks, but his fitness was low. If he had to go to war, he'd have no chance of competing against super creatures and king spirits. They encountered many creatures on the road, ones which Hansen wished to help fight against. But each time Lin Weiwei pulled him back in the belief she was protecting him, they only ever encountered mutant creatures, anyway. 
and those were killed in the blink of an eye. Lin Weiwei knew Han Sen had just become a surpasser, and so she believed he was weak. Because she regarded him as a friend, she felt compelled to protect him, too. The further they went across the mountain, the stronger the creatures became. The team stopped after their fourth day of travel. A green forest lay ahead of them, one that looked like an endless expanse. The trees nearest them seemed to be silverleaf poplars. The trees there crackled and popped with a green lightning. If you touched them, you'd be painfully electrocuted. They wondered whether or not they should have ventured beneath the boughs of such a curious location. The lightning trees were spaced a few meters apart, so if they all traveled together and something bad happened, they'd be in great danger amidst a scramble. But being unable to return the way they came, it didn't seem as if they had much of a choice. So, they had to keep going. Everyone ventured beneath the canopy of that forest with care. They dismounted their rides, not wanting to risk touching the trees. When a stiff wind blew, it tickled the electricity of the trees and produced many snapping sounds. A few lightning-charged leaves fell from the boughs above, and onto a surpasser who was immobile due to grievous injuries sustained in a previous fight. He screamed as his blood boiled, and smoke arose from his head. The leaves did not kill him, thankfully but it made the group doubly weary of the trees on their way. Chapter 1007 Life or Death Moment If we keep going like this, we are sure to meet our demise. We might as well turn back, one surpasser said, pleading for them to leave. Another surpasser threw up, and others broke down in tears or screams, afraid of the killing trees that surrounded them. Turn back? Turn back and go where? Lin he asked. Back to wind god shelter, the man answered. Lin Weiwei angrily retorted, Have you forgotten what occurred there? It was conquered by a spirit. It would be suicide to return. If we sign a contract, perhaps they won't kill us, the man said desperately. Everyone looked to Lin He, thinking the same way. Whichever way they were headed, their survival was not guaranteed. But amidst the deadly trees that surrounded them, making a groveling return to the shelter to put themselves at the whims of a spirit suddenly seemed like a more attractive option than it had before. If they knew for sure that there was a place of sanctuary somewhere ahead, they would continue. But only the unknown guided their feet, and that was the nexus of all their fears. Lin Weiwei had thought of surrendering to the spirits, too. What had occurred to them was not an anomaly. In fact, such conquerings were a frequent occurrence. They had each been lucky enough to spawn in a human shelter, anyway. And what do you say? Lin looked at each of them now, posing the question. When he did... They each lowered their heads in shame for what they wished to do. Uncle San, if there was a human shelter ahead of us, we would go. But we don't know what awaits us, a middle-aged man sadly proclaimed. Uncle San, can we truly make it across Ghost Mountain? We have barely begun our ascent, and already, a few of us have been killed. If monsters lie in wait, especially here amidst these trees, fighting them would be folly. We assuredly cannot compete. People started to argue amongst themselves laying forth their reasoning, but it did little to change things. People were starting to turn away and return. No one mentioned their desire to surrender to the spirit that had robbed them of their home, but their intent to do so is clear. Everyone has control of their own fate. Choosing whether you live or die is not a frequent privilege, but on this day, I believe you have each been given this choice. And this is not something I can decide for you. You may either straddle a thin line between life and death amidst the treacherous unknowns ahead, or return in the belief you will guarantee your survival, albeit as a thrall for a new and cruel master. Lenny gave another look to each member of his weary, broken-hearted group and continued by saying, I will not falter in my resolve to keep my fate my own. I will continue to traverse this path, and you are all welcome to join me. I would sooner die due to a bad decision that I made myself than submit to the whims of a callous spirit. You won't go back, a few people asked in shock. No, I won't forget the sacrifices made by our fallen allies, they that bravely allowed us to escape from the shelter. I won't allow their deaths to be in vain, Lenny proudly stated. The soldiers each wore a complex expression. No one wanted to be taken as a slave, but they couldn't see a happy existence ahead. Both options were shrouded in darkness. All life is precious. Command your own fate, and you won't be subject to judgment from me. Do what you think is best with this one life you possess. Lenny smiled. I'm going with you. I'd rather die with pride than whimper softly as some spirits Torak, Lin Weiwei said, as she went over to stand by Lenny's side. Hansen started walking over to Lin Weiwei, too. 
but she stopped him and said, you should go back with them. Ji Yin Ran is waiting for you, and this road is too perilous for one as green as you. Han Sen did not honor her wishes this time. He continued walking forward and said, if I go back, I don't think the spirit will allow me to use a teleporter. Han Sen's words startled a few of the surpassers, who had not fully realized how miserable and robbed of freedom they would be, with a spirit presiding over them. Some of those who were still on the fence decided to join Lin He after hearing this. Others, without a word, gave one last look to the foul trees around them, and turned away to exit. Although Hansen was strong, he could not promise to lead them all out safely. As such, he did not say a word. We will share our resources evenly, and then, we will go our separate ways, Lin He solemnly said. You are a good person. Lin Weiwei was actually surprised Hansen had decided to follow them. Lin Weiwei always thought Hansen was a decent human being, due to the accolades given by Lin Feng. But seeing his stoic heart in person was something else entirely. She had really grown fond of him. For many surpassers, this was a difficult decision. Such choices never came easy, even to the strongest of people. And Hansen, new as he was, made it without flinching. Hansen wished to tell her that, with his power, he would survive even if the rest of them died. But he held his tongue. Now wasn't the best time to hurt their feelings. Seeing people pack and organize their things before going their separate ways, no one looked confident in the decision they were making. Let's go, Lenny said, after taking a deep breath. Lenny started walking in the front, knowing he was the leader. He had to be firm in his resolve and not show a single sign of regret. He had to be a pillar of support for all those who followed him. After all, a leader could not lead if he did not know where he was going. The members of his band looked at each other and then moved forward to follow him, beneath the cruel malice that tainted the trees of that forest. Using his Dong aura, Hansen scanned the area. He needed to remain alert, for his own sake as much as theirs. Hansen, when are you going to marry Yanran? Lin Weiwei asked Hansen this light-hearted question, upon seeing the glum expressions that were glued to the faces of everyone else in their company. After this ordeal is over, I think it will be the right time. Hansen answered. Lin Weiwei wanted to say something else, but Hansen then suddenly said, Careful. A group of creatures is coming this way. Everyone was shocked at the sudden announcement, but when they looked carefully, they could see the flickers of a shadow that suggested something was coming for them. Chapter 1008 Wolf Pack Lin Weiwei and her people looked through the darkness and confusion, and Hansen did not say anything more. It didn't take long for her face to change and exclaim, Hansen is right. Many creatures are fast approaching. Linny heard the patter of paws on the forest floor, growing louder as the creatures moved towards them. He was surprised to learn that Hansen had noticed them a whole ten seconds before he did. Lin he had already opened seven gene locks, and for Hansen to have better awareness, he must have had a higher number unlocked. How such a thing was possible, he could not guess. Lin Weiwei looked at Hansen with shock now, too. She was just as surprised as Lin he was, to learn Han Sen was quicker to notice the incoming threat. The phantom prowlers were drawing nearer, and the sound of footsteps could now be heard by all of them. Stricken with nervousness, the fighters summoned their beast souls and began to sweat. They did not know what was coming their way, and they did not know how they'd fare when the battle commenced. Soon, a green shadow flickered through the nearby underbrush. A pair of emerald eyes gazed at them from out of the black. More flickering shadows appeared, and their silhouettes outlined by the green cracks and snaps of electricity. Daddy, I want to play with the cats, Bauer professed, clapping her hands with sudden exuberance. They aren't cats, Bauer. They're wolves. Hansen had a wry smile, as he determined the shapes to be that of wolves on the prowl. Hansen attributed Bauer's interest in the animal figures to her fondness for bright lights. The others were not half as relaxed as Hansen and Bauer were, though. There were at least 300 of those green wolves, but fortunately, they did not look too strong. Still, the environment did not do the humans any favors. In this dangerous forest, the trees themselves could be considered enemies. Once the wolves attacked, they'd have to watch their step, and it'd be too dangerous to take off running. If they ran smack into a tree, they'd be incinerated and killed in a frighteningly painful manner. Roar A lightning wolf cast a bolt of electricity at a person on the team which was quickly repelled with a fist ablaze with fire. Pang. Fire and electricity collided in the air. The block was successful, 
but the man had to take several steps back to maintain his guard. Everybody was now very alarmed at the sudden violence. The man that deflected the lightning bolt was called Shin Hu. He was not the strongest in the party, but he had unlocked five gene locks and his fitness was just over 1,500. Although he managed to repel the attack, it was not a flawless deflection. The wolves were strong, it seemed, and Hansen wagered they were mutant-class creatures. The wolf that attacked looked identical to the others in its pack, and this told Hansen one thing. They were all the same strength. They were all mutant-class. The party of humans was a strong collective, but they could hardly face down the 300 wolves that had shown up to chew them all to pieces. The wolf in the front howled, and they jumped towards Hans Sr. Hansen was happy this was going to happen, though, and he thought to himself, finally, it's my time to shine. I'm getting tired of Weiwei making me look like a noob. How can she have the audacity to make me look like a noob? Hansen rolled up his sleeves, ready to fight. But before he could make a move, Lin he brought out a long sword and screamed to the high heavens. One moment later, two of the wolves were dead, and a few were injured. The swing of that long sword was fast and cruel. Whimper. Whimper. The wolves fell back, the injured ones limping away while whimpering. Lin he was delighted, learning he was powerful enough to kill them. As good as this was for him, he feared his team wouldn't be up to the task and would fail to repel the invaders. So he decided to step forward and attack before the wolves could retaliate. He wanted to let the wolves know their passage shouldn't have been disturbed, and they were not a company of travelers to mess with. The wolves had most certainly been spooked. Despite their visible fear and trepidation, however, they seemed determined not to leave. Linny thought about trying to flee with his people, but all of a sudden, a louder howl sounded. The trees around them shivered with lightning that lit up the sky in response to that announcement. Everyone looked in the direction the howl came from and they saw a giant blue wolf perched on a rock. Blue lightning flashed around it as its howl ended. Everyone's face dropped in misery. They might have been able to kill the 300 mutant creatures, and they were confident enough to try. But when the alpha wolf showed up, that confidence evaporated, leaving them to tremble in fear. It's a sacred blood creature. Hansen frowned. He was not afraid of doing battle with a sacred blood creature, but he was unsure what it would be like to deal with an alpha wolf that was sacred blood. Many alpha wolves were smart, and if the humans couldn't kill it quickly, they'd have a lot of trouble going forward. Hansen had once encountered a sacred blood fox king in the first god sanctuary. It was able to control its entire tribe of foxes, and dealing with it was a monumental task for Hans Sr. When the subordinate wolves heard they were being backed up by their alpha, their fear vanished. With hearts renewed with courage, they leapt forward. Fly, you fools. I will draw their attention. Lenny commanded as he ran towards the wolves with his sword in hand. He was determined to take down that alpha. Chapter 1009 Wolf Pack Gone Stupid Hansen looked at Lin He with great respect. He knew he would most likely never see the man again, but he admired his willingness to give his life and draw the wolves away so that the rest could escape. Hansen did not believe he himself could perform such a courageous and selfless act. The alpha wolf looked disdainfully down at them. It acknowledged the ploy and howled, commanding the wolves to ignore the old man and go straight for Hans Sr. The alpha wolf looked at Lin He himself, and as it did, the blue light around it increased in intensity. Lin He knew he would be unable to one it kill the alpha wolf. He just wanted to pull the attention of all the wolves onto him, so his people could get away. He did not expect the alpha wolf king to be so smart, though. The wolf king knew better than to command its pups anywhere near Lin He and his drawn sword. Linny wanted to run back now and help his people against the Legion of Wolves. But before he could, the Wolf King leapt off the rock and fired a bolt of blue lightning at him. Seeing all the mutant wolves headed their way, the faces of the people changed. They knew things had taken a dire turn. Kill as many as you can, Lin Weiwei ordered, before fearlessly running forward to meet the wolves in battle. Chin Hu and the rest followed without delay, bravely submitting themselves to the grievous combat. Give me a chance to perform. Hansen opened his Dongshan Sutra and used it to wipe out all the senses of the wolves in the area. While Hansen was in the valley, he had practiced the Blood Pulse Sutra primarily. When he reached the ninth tier, and there was no more progress to be made, he turned his attention back to the Dongshan Sutra. With it, he managed to reach the fourth tier. The fourth tier, unfortunately, did not stifle the eighth sense of others as Hansen had believed it might. 
All it did was increase the radius of the other abilities he was already able to perform. It was fairly disappointing. That wasn't to say Dong Shin Aura was ineffective, though. Upon its casting, Hansen transformed all the bloodthirsty wolves into canine-like relatives of headless chickens. They started to flail around aimlessly, unsure of what was happening or what they could do. Unfortunately, while it worked wonderfully on the Legion of Lesser Wolves, it wasn't strong enough to debilitate the Wolf King. That meant the Wolf King, much like the Monkey King, had opened its eighth sense. Lin Weiwei believed she was running into one last valiant battle, where she'd most likely fall. But all of a sudden, the wolves in front of her lost their focus. They wonkily remained in place, as if they were spaced out. The humans initially believed this to be a scheme of the wolves, but when they lunged forward with their weaponry, the wolves failed to evade them. They were able to cut down the wolves with ease, and there seemed to be nothing the wolves could do to protect themselves. The wolves acted as if they had been robbed of their brains. It seemed as if they did not even feel pain, and they all just stood there, allowing themselves to be killed. A couple of the wolves were jumpy and spat out lightning, but those bolts only ended up striking their allies and incinerating them. Hansen went to join in with the mutant wolf slaying, but felt it was unnecessary. His mutant point tally had been maxed out, so it was pointless for him to do this. When all of their senses were blocked, their sight and hearing were blocked as well. Their sense of touch was disabled, too, and that meant they couldn't feel pain. The wolves were allowing themselves to be killed, or so it seemed. And swiftly, thirty of the blighters had been cut down. Although the humans on the field were unsure of what was going on, they were delighted, regardless. Lin He was ecstatic. When the Wolf King noticed something was wrong with its subordinates, it howled to rally them. But the wolves, of course, could not hear a thing. They either stood still, trying to maintain balance, or walked around in circles aimlessly. Seeing the wolves get mowed down with ease, the Wolf King decided to flee the scene despite the grievous loss. Its speed was blisteringly quick, and it managed to disappear from sight in no time at all. Lenny turned back to rejoin his allies, and side by side with Hansen, got to work on killing all the wolves that had once sought to eat them up. All in all, the group managed to kill just over a hundred of the furry fiends. Fortunately for many of the ones in the back, they managed to wander away and have their lives spared through sheer luck. Are those wolves retarded? Chen Hu said. Everyone looked happy. After fleeing their home and fearing for their lives for weeks on end, it felt tremendously good to kill their enemies without worry. Their adrenaline was pumping, and their murderous rage had flared. They had hunted sacred blood creatures together in the past, but such fights were extremely difficult. They were long and tiring, and one had to exercise caution at all times. To mindlessly hack and slash enemies, to kill carefree, was a joyous experience. Uncle San, what happened to those wolves? Lin Weiwei believed it was Lin He who had done this. But Lin He shook his head, indicating he didn't know what had happened, either. Lin He looked to Hansen, then. He knew his people well, and he knew of all the abilities they possessed. The only person he didn't know well was Han Senator. What's more, Hansen had somehow managed to detect the presence of the coming wolves before even he could. Hansen, you did this, didn't you? Lin He asked. Hansen nodded and said, Yes. I can snuff out six of their senses. Hansen did not dare say he could actually block seven of them. That would have given people quite a shock. Lin Weiwei was just about to say it couldn't have been Hansen, as he had just become a surpasser. But now, she had her breath taken away. She could hardly believe it. Everyone now looked at Hansen in a different way. It is no wonder President G would allow you to marry his daughter. You saved all our lives here. Lin gave Hansen a pat on the shoulder. Good job. Brother Han. Chen Hu gave him two thumbs up. Lin Weiwei looked at Han Sin as if she did not know him. Little Sin Sin, why didn't you tell me you could do something like this? Lin Weiwei asked Han Sin, which made him feel awkward. Fortunately for him, she wasn't mad, and she didn't feel as if she had been insulted. Chapter 1010 My Time to Shine The Lightning Forest was not the sort of place one could hold lengthy discussions. After a brief talk, they heard wolves howling in the distance. When the sounds subsided, the lightning trees seemed to react as if a message was being relayed, passed from tree to tree. Shin Hu and the others were unnerved at the sight, and mournfully realized that their trials might not be over. In the distance, the surviving wolves prowled in the undergrowth and watched the travelers. Come and fight us, if you dare. Your howls will accomplish nothing. Shin Hu was annoyed, 
and their constant watching made him itch. He couldn't help but blurt out insults towards them. Let's just hasten our passage and leave this forest as soon as we can, Lin Weiwei said. Don't be afraid. There's no need to be. If they come closer, I am sure our friend Hansen will reactivate their retardation mode, Chen Hu said. Talking will only slow us down. We should hurry. I have only opened my fourth gene lock. And if there are sacred blood creatures amongst them, my powers won't be half as effective. It'll be bad news if we have to face off against sacred blood wolves, Hansen said. But there's only one wolf king. And it's only sacred blood. Jin Hu let out a hearty laugh. They continued walking through the forest, and they espied more and more wolves amassing on the fringes of their sight. There were dozens of sharp, gleaming eyes watching them. Some followed them from behind. Others were up front. Every now and again, they all howled. Oh no. There must be at least a thousand of them around us. By now, Lenny said. They did not see the wolf king but the number of subordinate wolves was enough to strike fear into their hearts. Chen Hu did not say anything now, and Lin Weiwei's nerves looked racked. Things did not look good for the band of travelers. If Lin Hia Dong Shen Aura, it would have been far more effective. But he didn't, and Han Sin's senses were the best of the group. This meant he was the one who had to remain the most alert. And Han Sin knew the number of wolves around them was greater than Lin He's estimation. There was, in fact, 2,300 wolves baying for their blood. Although there were no sacred blood creatures, it was a terrifying number for even the strongest person to think of competing with. Those wolves sure look hungry. Please, remain vigilant. As Lenny said this, the sacred blood wolf king revealed itself. Before they could react, though, for more wolf kings appeared. They each came from a different direction, surrounding them on all sides. Me and my big mouth. Chin who wished he could take back what he had said, and did not incite any further ire from the wolves by taunting them. Even though Hansen could deal with the legions of mutant wolves, the combined strength of the sacred blood wolf kings was out of his league. Pull. The five wolf kings howled in unison, and after that, all the lesser wolves began running towards the group with a ravenous appetite. Hansen quickly snuffed out their senses for a reenactment of what had occurred earlier. Pa. So dumb. Have they not learned a thing? Chin who tried to lighten the mood. But unlike last time, the wolves did not stop and wander about aimlessly. They seemed to react better to their disability, and they ran forward at a decent pace. Ping! A wolf came into contact with a lightning tree, which rattled it. From the boughs above, many leaves began to fall. Oh, no! Lenny screamed. It was a new tactic. The wolves mindlessly charged forward to bash the trees and make the forest rain those electrifying leaves. The lightning danced from leaf to leaf in sparkling freefall. Everyone drew a weapon and tried to cut the leaves before they could touch them. With every connection of a leaf to a weapon, the leaves exploded in a firework of electricity. It was a frightful sight. The leaves were like rainfall, and one leaf was enough to injure you so grievously you could no longer raise a weapon. These wolves are smart, Lin Weiwei said, as her once hopeful spirit began to sink. With a wry smile, Hansen responded, I underestimated their cunning. I shouldn't be surprised that they came up with a solution for our initial trick. Lin He was shredding the airborne leaves like a madman, and without him there, they wouldn't have been able to survive the leaf rain as long as they did. The wolves did not relent in their bashing of the trees. And as more and more leaves departed their harboring branches, many wolves decided to rush to the fighters and do what they could in close quarter combat. It's my time to shine. Hansen's skin started to turn red as if he was a being formed of blood. His black pupils turned red, with many rings emerging within. Hansen's pupils soon had seven of these rings, indicating his blood pulse sutra had seven gene locks active. He only had a fitness of 1500. If he activated his eighth gene lock, he wouldn't be able to last very long, and he'd most likely end up damaging his own body. Hansen ran the Phoenix Hypergeno art, and his body burst into a living brazier of wild flames. Updated by Novelful, calm. The fire was no longer black, either. Due to the effect of the Blood Pulse Sutra, the fire looked demonically red. It was terrifying. 